Today we're looking at the Canon 35mm f1.8 LTM lens. Hello, welcome back. Matt from MrLiker.com. Hope you guys are all well. Today I have my third Leica thread mount lens review. So review number three of series two. So as you just saw, we're going to look at the Canon 35mm f1.8 lens. This is a really nice lens. And as you can see, I've got it mounted on my Leica CL, which makes a really nice kind of compact small setup. So I'll try and keep this video shorter. We'll go through all the details you need to know about this lens and then I'll show you some example photos both shot on digital and on film. Let's take a look. So firstly in terms of size this is quite a compact lens. This lens has a 40mm filter thread and only weighs 125 grams, which is super lightweight. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, this is like a thread mount lens, meaning it's screw mount or L39. Hopefully you can see that. So thread mount lens. So if this is a thread mount lens, how do you fit it to your Leica M mount camera? Whether that's a Leica branded camera or any other camera using the M mount. So what you need is one of these screw mount to M mount adapters. I'll drop a link to this in the description below. They're really cheap unless you get the branded versions made by say Leica or Voigtlander, then they're a bit more expensive. Being a 35mm lens, if you want this to show 35mm frame lines on your Leica M mount camera, make sure you buy the adapter that says it's very faint, you probably can't see. You need the adapter that says 35 slash or brackets 135. That means this adapter will show you the frame lines for 35mm and 135mm. Alternatively, you can just use it on a like M2, which has already got the 35mm frame lines kind of in the viewfinder. So really nice small lens. In terms of the lens design, it goes from f1.8 to f22. And these are one-stop clicks. The lens has a 10 blade design and a close focus distance of one meter. In terms of the look of this lens, I'd say it is a creative lens or a artistic lens or whatever the cool way is to say it. That being, it's not ridiculously sharp. It's not super high contrast and it gives it kind of a more vintage rendering. So, so what is vintage rendering? I would describe that as maybe slight veiling flare, which basically comes across as lower contrast. Not clinically sharp wide open, but more than sharp enough for me, wide open at f1.8 on digital. When I shoot film, I tend to shoot it at f2 or f2.8. Obviously, the more you stop it down, the sharper it's gonna get, so it's gonna be even sharper at f4 and even sharper at 5.6. In terms of bokeh or booker, as you can see in this photo, if you're shooting the right conditions, then you shoot the lens wide open, you can get quite a nice kind of out of focus area and bokeh in the background. So let's look at some photos. The first set of photos are shot on digital on the Leica CL, which is a crop sensor digital camera, meaning the 35mm acts more like a 50mm equivalent on a full frame camera. I find the size of this lens perfect for my Leica CL and give me a 50mm equivalent, which really well for me as I'm kind of a more of a 50mm shooter. So as I say, all these photos are shot wide open at f1.8. I never feel the need to stop down on my digital sensor because you can always sharpen in post processing. Now these photos are shot on film. Some of them are shot on a Voigtlander Besser R, I believe. Some of them are shot on a Leica M2. Some of them are shot on a Leica M3. But obviously the camera body just acts as a light box. You can get really nice shallow depth of field shooting at wide open on a full frame sensor. Obviously if you're getting close to your subject. So I've switched this video up a bit and I've put the pricing later in the video. How much does this lens cost? Now, if you watched the previous video on the Canon 50mm 1.8, that is a much more affordable lens. I'll link that video below if you've not seen it. The Canon 35mm 1.8, firstly, is really difficult to find. And secondly, if you do find it, they seem to go for around 380 to 400 pounds. Now talking about difficult to find, I found this lens almost impossible to find. But if you saw my last video talking about eBay tips and tricks, Again, I can link it below. We specifically look at this lens as an example and how to find these hard to find lenses on eBay. So although the title probably sounded really boring, eBay tips and tricks, it's like, oh, boring. 
you might actually find it quite useful if you're into these the sort of lenses that I use. So if you've not seen it, feel free to check it out and you will see this lens featured in that video. And so finally the verdict, would I recommend this lens if you can find one? Yes, I've used it a huge amount since buying this lens, I'll tell you approximately 12 months ago. I find this lens especially useful on the Leica CL body because the size as I mentioned works really well for me and also the 50mm equivalent works really well for me. Sometimes I find 50mm lenses on the CL sometimes a bit too long. If you can't find this lens, another alternative could be the Voigtlander Nocturne 35mm 1.4. Now that's actually a more modern lens, so if you don't need the screw mount design for say a screw mount camera, say perhaps the Leica 3A or the Leica 3G cameras like that that I use, or perhaps the Besser R that's also a screw mount, there are quite a few screw mount cameras out there. If you're only buying this to use on a modern camera, then you can definitely look at the Nocturne 35 1.4. I'll say if you get the Nocturne, if you get the single coated version, it might be slightly similar to this, but without testing the lenses side by side, I would say the Nocturne is probably sharper with more contrast less failing flare and still a nice small lens so if you don't need the screw mount maybe check out the Voigtlander 35 1.4 again I can link it below if you don't need the 1.8 aperture maybe check out the Voigtlander Coloscope R 35mm 2.5 you can get that lens in both the screw mount design and the M mount design again I can link that below just to add the Scope R design is much more contrasty and much sharper and much more modern so it really does depend on kind of the vibe that you're looking for this works especially well for portraits and i'd say the scope r is much more of a kind of modern design which may be better for non-portraits obviously it depends on your taste okay i think that's it this might be a world record for a slightly shorter video so patting myself on the back i hope you found it useful as always i'd really appreciate it if you can take a second to hit the like button it helps to get this video shown to a wider audience and then more people can hopefully benefit from these amazing vintage thread mount lenses. If you've used this lens before or you have any thoughts, please drop me a message in the comments. Maybe you are a Canon Thid5 f2 shooter or maybe you are a Canon Thid5 f2.8 shooter for example. There are quite a few Thid5 mount Canon lenses. Please subscribe if you've not already done so. Lots more lenses to come. A big thank you as always to my patrons and I'll see you all back here soon for the next video. Bye.